Hello everyone, only Draven here again. Today we're doing another tutorial in Minecraft Sky Factory 4. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make and use the different cables that are included as part of the simple storage mod. Uh, these cables are what allow you to move items in and out of the simple storage system, and they work in different ways. Now, if you find this video helpful and you like it, please be sure to click like. But most importantly, please remember to hit that subscribe button that way you can see all my videos and tutorials as they come out. Okay, so there are five different cables that are part of the simple storage network. And the first one is just storage cable. And that is made by using six stone slabs, two iron ingots. Next is gonna be the storage link cable, which is one chest with four of the storage cables we just made a moment ago. Next is the storage import cable, which is a hopper with four of the storage cables. Then there's the storage export cable, which is a piston with four of the storage cables. And the last one is the processing cable, which is an observer with four of the storage cables and four gold nuggets. So these work in different ways, but all of them are meant to move items in and out of your simple storage network. So you'll need a storage request table and a storage network master to make this work. So let's take a look at the first one. Grab a few items. So let's just say you have a chest. With this chest, you want to connect it. So that way the items that you have in this chest, in this situation, 64 oak wood planks, are able to be accessed from your storage request table. You're going to take your storage link and you're going to connect that. Connect any inventory source, whether it be a filing cabinet or a chest of any type. <clears throat> Use the storage link cable to connect to the network master. You will then have access to anything inside that chest from inside of the simple storage network itself. You can take them out. Now they're in my inventory. They're not in the chest any longer. I can put them back in. Now they're back in that chest. This allows you to access multiple storage for inventories in one simple location. Now, the other thing we want to look at is say the storage that you're looking to connect is further away than just one. You're still going to use your import cable, just like you did before, but this is where the storage cables come in. Storage cables are used to connect any of the link cables to your storage network master. So now when I go over here, drop that in, have access to the 64 again. Now, when I take those out and I put them back in, they didn't go back to the chest. They did go back to the chest I pulled them out of. So we want to have them go into this chest. So this is where we come into priorities. So if you right click on your storage link cable, you'll see several different settings here. And the first two are your promote priority. So the lower the number, the higher the priority. So if it's negative five, and this one is a zero. Negative five is a lower number, which makes this storage box a higher priority. So whenever I put items into the storage network via the table, it is going to go to the lowest priority cable. If multiple of them have um, lower priority, it's going to go to whichever one had connected to it first or the closest block. Um, but you can change a couple other things here. You can blacklist or whitelist specific items. You may not want to go into this chest. Uh, this is an import filter, not something you're going to use much. And the input and output, um, what we're doing is putting items in the table here, allows it to go in and out of this chest. You can have it set where it's out only. So items will not go back into this chest. You're only pulling them out. But that will allow you to connect multiple storage systems, again, filing cabinets or chests, and allow you to move those, uh, connect them to any direction you need. Okay. That's the first one, first two, and those are the easy ones. Take a look at the next one. So in this situation, I'm gonna drop a chest again. We're gonna connect it with a storage link cable, just like we did before. So in this, this test, we're gonna be using some cobblestone. Just like before, like that, I can see cobblestone. I can pull it out of here. No longer in the inventory, put it back in, in that inventory. Say I have a, an automated process, and I want to move items from that process into my storage system. Put a chest here. Say I have a cobblestone generator, and it's putting cobble into this. I now want that cobblestone to go in here, but I don't want it to just go into the middle or go anywhere. I want it to go somewhere specific. 
This is where we're going to use our storage import cable. So we collect the storage import cable. Got it connected there. Nothing is happening yet. There's a reason for that. This situation, of course, you can go into the UI and you can set the priority as well. This one here is whitelist or blacklist. Right now, nothing is whitelisted, so it's not letting anything through. We'll change that in just a moment. And then import filter again, something you need to use. And then there are these four slots up here. These four slots, some of these cable exist, and these are places where you can put upgrades. Take a look at some of the upgrades. For example, I grabbed two here. So if I wanted to do an, put upgrades, I have here speed upgrade, which increases the speed of importing and exporting. And I have stack upgrades. So instead of going one at a time, it'll do an entire stack of 64 as it is processing it in and out of this box. Now, when you put them up here, they do not stack. You can have up to four upgrades. I like to use three speed and one stack upgrade. That's myself. But you can't stack more than one in here. So four upgrades total is what you can put into one of these cables. Now, we'll pull those out again for just a moment. So now, as I said, the kettle stone's here. It hasn't moved. If we go in here and we change this to blacklist, where nothing is blacklisted, it means everything can go in, you'll see that the cobblestone is moving out of this chest, into our storage, and over into this chest here. Moving four at a time. Let that finish its process. So. There we go. It's all done. So now again, we'll go in here and we'll put those upgrades like I mentioned a moment ago. Three speed upgrades, one stack upgrade. Grab our cobblestone again. Put it in here. The entire stack is gone. Because I did that stack upgrade, it moved in an entire stack of 64 at once. Now, if there were multiple things of cobble stacks of cobblestone, it would move one 64 at a time. 64, 64, 64, which as you can see is a drastic speed increase over the four at a time. You can toggle that black white list off if there's specific items you want to go in or not. And then the upgrades will work as well. So that's an easy way to move items out of a chest and into your network. And again, if I had multiple chests and I wanted to go to a specific one, that's where I'm going to use priorities. Again, on those chests, you can also set priorities on your import cable as well. All right, so there's another one down. Oops, made a hole. Fixed. Rid of those. The next one we're going to look at here is going to be our storage export cable. Let's set chest down here. All right, and then we're going to set another chest over here. We have two chests. Now, this first one we're going to connect with our storage link cable because, again, that's the primary cable we're going to use for everything. And in this situation, we're going to go ahead and we're use oak wood, stick it up here in this corner. Now, when we look at it, of course, it's looking just as normal. Now, what we're going to use here is the storage export cable. We're going to connect that to that chest. So as this setup, as we have it right here, the system is going to basically ignore this export cable until we make some changes to it. Take my oak wood out, pull it out of that chest, put it back in. It's going to put it back in this chest. It's going to move as if this does not exist. So let's go ahead and grab one of these. We're going to go into the UI of the storage export cable by right-clicking on it. So just like any of the other cables, you have the ability to set its priority, higher or lower. A place where you can go ahead and put the uh, upgrades if you want to use them. But what an export cable does is it moves items out of your inventory into an attached storage network. Let's go ahead and say, now we have wood. Wood is the one item we want to move, these wood logs. We're going to put that in here, which basically whitelists that item. As you can see... The logs are now moving from the network into this attached inventory. So if I wanted them to pull out for any reason, I can do that. And I can do, of course, multiple items. It doesn't just have to be logs, but it will pull those items out of the network. So say I have some automated process, um, maybe hopping bonsais, and it's putting a whole bunch of logs into this network. But I want them to pull out into here. So I can then put an extraction cable and have them go into some process where they're burned or used and maybe say a combustion generator. This is how you pull those items out automatically and then run into another system. It'll continue to pull until all of the items that are in the network of that type are in this inventory location or the inventory location is full. That's how an export cable works. Again, very, very easy. Right, let's clean that one up. 
All right, and that leaves us with the last one. And this one's going to be the big guy. So, again, we're going to go ahead and set a chest here. And now we're looking at the processing cable. So processing cable is really allows you to pull items in and out of a system to allow for things like auto crafting. So I have here an auto crafter. I'm going to go ahead and put that down here. It's going to need a power source. So I've got a battery. I'm going to connect it. Um, any power source, of course, will work. My crafter now has full power. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the auto crafter. And this is important to do this in this order. Before you put on any of your cables, you're going to go into your auto crafter and you're going to set the recipe that you're wanting to use. So, again, in this situation, I have some dirt resin, I have some dirt acorn. I'm going to have this basically turn into dirt. Okay, there's my recipe. So now it'll create dirt as items come in there, the resin and the acorns. Now I'm going to connect a processing cable to that. Processing cable, you go into it. You find this one's a little bit different than any of the other ones that you saw. Most of this default stuff you're going to want to leave as it is. R will refresh the, the setup, but overall you want to leave it as it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the items that you need for uh, the setup that you're looking to make. So in this situation, as we know, I need five resin and four acorn. So I'm going to take that five resin, click it on the left-hand side. You notice it says five next to it. Take four dirt acorns and set it there. doesn't matter where you put them in this nine by nine. It just has to be a stack of five and a stack of four. And then on the right-hand side, you're going to click with what that makes. In this situation, it's going to be dirt. And I haven't done it yet because if you look on the left, on my screen here, it says controller active, transaction invalid. We need to set an output. So we put dirt tells us that that transaction is now valid. It's saying that it's going to make that pattern come through. So we're going to go over here now, and let's grab us one of these. We're going to connect ourselves an inventory system. Look at our inventory right now. We have nothing. I'm going to dump in a bunch of acorn and resin. You can see the numbers are disappearing very, very quickly. And look, I now have 24 dirt. So what happened is, is the system pulled acorn and resin out in a ratio of five resin, four acorn to create a dirt. It then moved that dirt back into the inventory system. Since this is the only other storage when we have it, went right back into this same chest. Had I had a filing cabinet set at a different priority um, or a different chest at a different priority, the dirt would have went into that instead. But in either case, it's automatically set up. So hypothetically, if I had a hopping bonsai with a dirt sapling connected to this, and it was consistently throwing in resin and acorns, then this auto crafter would be automatically turning that into dirt for me as long as those resin and acorn keep coming in. Take a look. I'll show you what I mean again. So we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves another dirt resin, another dirt acorn. So Bonsai Hopper drops in some more. Automatically starts cycling that through. And it's using up as much. So this is a great way of keeping it from clogging because it's only going to take the items out of your network in that ratio, five and four. So if I wanted to turn this, say, into amber, say I had iron resin and iron acorn, and it was making iron amber, I could then have the network pulling it through an export cable into a chest and having that chest connect directly into a, say, smeltery or melter, melting it into iron ingots, and then having the iron ingots connecting to my network and coming back in over here. It's a way of automatically setting up everything without having to worry about that clogging issue that you run into um, in many situations with an auto crafter. It's only going to let that through in that specific ratio. All right. So these cables are super important, especially if you're using your simple storage network. Um, you're going to use definitely the storage link cables um, and the storage cables themselves more than anything else. Um, but each of these different cables we've looked at today can really help you out in one or more different ways, depending on how you set it up. It allows for a lot of different automation or a lot of different storage setup. Uh, so I'd be very excited and interested to see uh, what different ways you can come up with um, to use these cables in your own network.
Uh, but that is going to do us for this tutorial. Um, hopefully it was helpful for you. Um, if you do have any questions about this tutorial or any of my tutorials, please be sure to put those down in the comments. I'll do my very best to get back with you as quickly as I can, as well as any recommendations or suggestions you may have for other tutorials that you'd like to see in Sky Factory 4. I'm always looking for new ideas. You can also go to my website, onlydraven.com, and there, um, at the bottom of the homepage, is a place you can submit questions, feedback, or recommendations via email. If you'd rather go email directly or anonymously. Uh, you'll also find links to all of my videos and tutorials, links to my social media accounts, links to my streaming schedule, and uh, as well as links uh, to uh, the ODG store. You can find a lot of cool Only Draven gaming merchandise. There's a lot of great resources on the website. I highly recommend checking it out. That one's going to do us for today. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.